Hi, everybody. My name is Caleb Allen. Today I'll be talking about um, the virus that is VI, that is infecting uh, most software out there, and its progression toward the Julia runtime and the Julia REPL. Um, I really like VI and Vim and all of its descendants. I think it's a great computer program. Um, it was invented by Bill Joy in 1979, uh, released as part of the first uh, or second uh, Unix distribution uh, uh, out of Berkeley. Um, VI uh, allegedly comes from the visual uh, part of it as the first visual editor uh, that took a step beyond just line editing from the, from the terminal. Um, it has a lot of great features. It works with many languages. Uh, it has macros. I love macros. Uh, you can search with regular expressions pretty efficiently. Uh, and it can also operate on very large files uh, that many other editors would struggle with uh, by using buffers. I also think that Julia is a great computer program, uh, hence, you know, being at JuliaCon. Uh, and it, it has a lot of uh, very nice features um, that I think merit investigation for people who use Vim. Um, it was launched in 2012. Uh, it works with many programming languages, including C and Python. It has macros. It has regular expressions. And it can operate on very large files with buffers. So, you know, uh, on first look, for a Vim user, it, it, it's kind of got a lot of uh, some features in common with, uh, with Vim. With Julia, I'm sorry. But we're kind of in this predicament as, as VI users. On the one hand, you have this powerful, dynamic, performant, expressive programming language that uh, is able to tackle problems that uh, are either difficult or, or uh, impossible in other programming languages. On the other hand, it's not VI, and it's not a VI descendant. So how do we uh, go about uh, allowing ourselves permission to use this program? Um, should we compromise? Should we uh, decide that some non-VI programs are worth using? Um, and maybe have we become a little enthusiastic uh, about using Vim and trying to move uh, and, and transform every other program we use into Vim with the browser, with uh, uh, editors, um, you know, you name it, th there's often a Vim implementation of it. And even Bill Joy, the author, says, uh, VI was written for a world that doesn't exist anymore unless you decide to get a satellite phone. So uh, the author himself has uh, kind, of, uh, uh, it, uh, kind of insulted it, really. Um, but I think we all know that um, once something's been unleashed into the world, it can't be recontained. Uh, VI will not be contained. VI uh, finds a way. So last year, I presented uh, vimbindings.jl, which uh, it's pure Julia, a pure Julia package that's available now. Um, it menu emulates many of the uh, features of Vim directly in the Julia REPL. Um, and it, it gets the job done. It, it, it moves uh, a, a Vim user from uh, not being able to use Julia at all to maybe being able to use Julia with reservations. Um, but it's not, it, it's, it's a partial implementation and it's not very configurable. Um, uh, this is what I see as uh, the uh, Julia community, the innocent REPL users, uh, and the Vim bindings package being unleashed. Um, just the start of what's to come. So, changing directions a little bit, uh, let, I want to take a look at a, a, a different ecosystem. Uh, VS Code NeoVim, which uh, for those who are unaware is a, uh, it's an extension for the VS Code editor, um, which implements Vim, uh, a Vim mode by essentially outsourcing all of the Vim work to a running instance of NeoVim and uh, wiring up uh, API calls, um, which uh, allows, uh, allows the, uh, the package maintainer, the extension maintainer, um, the freedom of not having to implement every single feature of Vim, right? So uh, it, it also makes it configurable. Um, 
essentially puts the uh, Vim instance under the uh, editor. So in this uh, scenario, I see Dr. Frankenstein as an enthusiastic Vim user uh, who's using VS Code, uh, which is the body of the monster, but the brains of the monster is running on the NeoVim API. And um, I, I have been uh, c working on a prototype that, that does this for the Julia REPL um, and gotten some progress. Um, there, there's uh, still work to be done, but uh, effectively, here's th this outlines um, what that looks like. Um, you have the Julia REPL running on the one hand, uh, a remo remote procedure channel uh, talking to a NeoVim instance, um, and then communicating the text changes, the key strikes, and so forth. Um, the documentation for this is, is uh, at that URL. So the reason I'm uh, presenting is that I'd like to solicit feedback from users. Um, there's a lot of questions that, that are not technical, but are design questions. Um, is a NeoVim feature, uh, is somebody who would, you know, um, among those questions are, do we restrict what NeoVim features are enabled? like marks, plugins, how do these interact with the REPL? It, it doesn't, it, it's very unclear. Um, do we use a local NeoVim instance or uh, pack use a pa the package manager? Um, do we uh, bring this into Vim bindings package or create a new package? Uh, effectively, uh, come talk to me afterwards if, if you have any thoughts about this. Um, I'd love to uh, discuss. Um, after all, for many users, <laughs> it is a Unix system. And uh, I think we want to keep it that way, no matter where we are computing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Caleb. And do we have any questions here? So I guess I'm curious, are you interested in embedding NeoVim within Julia or embedding Julia within like a dedicated like NeoVim pane? Uh, the former. Uh, okay. Embedding is effectively yes. So, okay. so starting up a NeoVim instance and binding the uh, 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 key bindings. Okay. But you know, this is exactly the conversation mm -hmm. that I'm looking for is, is how do we want to do something like this? Okay. The most important question. Once I have Vim bindings, how do I exit the REPL? <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's the genius of this virus is once it's in there, you can never ever get it out. That's why I'm still using Vim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, if we don't have any questions, let's thank our speaker again. And